Hey everyone, it's the Brain in a Vat again. Stop it, Nomadicus. So, you guys like a good roast, right? I know you do. I mean, I have shied away from this sort of thing thus far. As I've said on multiple occasions, I'm really only interested in going after more harmful and consequential claims and I prefer to focus on those with a large influence. As I said, I came here to help educate on critical thinking in this community, as I think it just might be helpful, and because I was disturbed by certain behavior. And it seems that many of you agree about this. We might just differ on what exactly that means, or who is indeed guilty of this bad behavior. In any case, I'm going to make an exception today. I have already let a few of these little petty interpersonal squabbles go from other creators, as they're inconsequential, and I prefer to not go after low-hanging fruit. I know a lot of channels make their living off this stuff, but I'm not just but I'm just not very keen on that sort of thing. After a decade as an educator on social media, I prefer to do more of that rather than the roasting. And I'd like to believe that is more value added at the end of the day, even if it's just not sensational enough and lacks the necessary drama that everyone drools over and flocks to. Had I enjoyed it, I'd have already jumped on the bandwagon and gone after the new bad actors in MGL, BB, and JLR, like everyone else has now. And I'm going to use that format that everyone likes to use, where you conveniently stop the tape every few seconds and then try to ev eviscerate and excoriate bad arguments. So, uh-oh, I have an angry cat. So today, I'm going to give you some drama. It doesn't really make me happy to do so, but a drama king with a persecution complex begged me to become an enemy and made a hit piece against me and well I just can't resist this time so hopefully this will satiate this sort of thing for a bit after all I gave Josh's little dirty delete a pass after he got his three-hour debate on my channel and apparently didn't like the way it turned out and then Graz's little drama where he took a benign comment out of context and thought it was worthy of an entire live stream. Unfortunately for him, that didn't really go very well, and his argument lacked a certain, je ne sais pas, substance, maybe? No actual arguments? A nothing burger of sorts? That made him look quite petty. But I learned a lesson that day. For petty people, they will use any comment you make, whether it makes them look bad or not, as a content opportunity, and are willing to run with it and make themselves some juicy drama for views. How noble! What a worthy cause making a two-hour live stream because you had a difference of opinion on something. My crime in that case was saying I didn't want to watch one of his shows because he had one of my bad actors on, and again, let him get away with mis misrepresenting another case. Almost the exact same thing I had exposed in one of my prior videos. Odd, that. Plus, after the guy came to me on several occasions calling me his mentor, who he wanted to interview and collaborate with, and asking for ad my advice as to why he kept associating with grifters, he simply did it again and threw me under a bus for contact. What do they say? No good deed goes unpunished, right? Well, this is another one of those cases. In this one, someone grabs some emails they sent to me and cherry picks and misrepresents a story to fit a narrative and then goes off to whine in their safe space rather than behave like a grown-up. Why do these people do that? Well, part of it is because they can't actually respond with substantive rebuttals or address actual argument, or even actually make an argument. So they choose the petty pathway, make an appeal to emotion fallacy in front of their loyal followers for pity, and to try to save face. And in this case, this person 
is desperately trying to save a lot of face after recent events which seemingly have found him in a lot of hot water. So this story is about Griff, a drama king and a coward. As usual, I'll show you a bunch of evidence and then we'll have a look-see and some commentary. He was offended by the word look-see, which I'll address later. I had nothing against the, the guy and had no intention of going after him, but he really did beg me after being rude in a series of emails, and then the kiss was his live stream yesterday. He had an issue with the way one of my mods treated him while I was having an interview on live stream, and finally decided to take a shot at me for it. So let's see how this plays out for him, and if it stacks up under scrutiny and evidence. So for anyone who didn't see his prior live, he announced his departure from YouTube to make his name on Patreon, because everyone was determined to bring down his channel. In fact, the Lisa fake suicide hoax was part of a conspiracy, all designed to take down his channel, apparently. He stated he was going to private all of his videos and would make them available for anyone willing to make a cash offer for his prior content. I'm not sure, but maybe like a fine wine, old live streams gain value with time? What's happening, people? I know I said I wasn't going to be doing no more of these, but I figured it was just to do it. How's everybody doing? So, we begin with the I'm leaving everyone. Goodbye, cruel world. No one likes me. Everyone hates me. I think I'll go eat some worms, Gambit. And then the subsequent, Hey everyone, I'm back. How you all doing today? Social media cliche. Gosh, I've never seen anyone rage quit on social media, only to be resurrected from the dead again mysteriously a couple hours later. We'll find out, maybe, that he was just feeling cranky, and maybe he ends up staying here after all. But... I don't know if y'all heard any of that I had playing. I've got questions with it. First of all, where the hell is the apology at? And second of all, is she completely got amnesia? Because I cannot tell what the hell she's talking about. Was it her use of English that confused you, Griff? It was pretty clear to me. I don't think she has amnesia. I think you just are not very good at reading and listening comprehension. I'll try to demonstrate that over this video. The other option, of course, is you just don't like what you read and hear, so you have to try to spin it in your favor somehow. And her defining moments are very futile at least, at least. <laughs> um, yes, he... He did just use some words, and he put them together. But I can't tell what the hell he's talking about. I want to rewind this a second. I want to just get to the point here before I play this. And this is only one time. There's only one time I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do no more of it. And if you're here trying to think, I'm going to try to uh, address what's going on with uh, Benny Keys and the rest of his entourage. I'm not, going to, I'm not here to, to give them the damn time of day. That's as far as I'm going to go with that. Uh, what they're saying is all lies. I know it is. Yes, he's he's not going to go after his mortal enemy and nemesis, the Benny, the guy he obsesses about constantly. It seems rather that there might be a bit of envy in that whole thing, actually. In any case, he thought he'd have a go at me instead. Maybe he thought I wouldn't retaliate, a word he will employ a bit later. They know it is. It's slander. Apparently, he needs somebody he can bullshit with. When I told him I was leaving YouTube, moving on, I told everyone that. By the way, he wasn't special. Apparently, he took it the wrong way. Or he took it the way he wanted to take it. I don't care how he took it. To be honest with you, it does not bother me. But be clear, this topic that I put on here will be addressed. We will be talking about that momentarily, about the um, cyberbullying, harassing, vigilantism works it will be addressed 
Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be talking about some bullying here today. I'll be cutting out the vast majority of this live stream as it's primarily a lot of colorful pseudo-philosophy with a bit of regional rustic word salad sandwich and some charming regional idioms, which I suppose purport to have meaning. Um, I, I see a lot of bad philosophy all the time, and I see a bunch of hypocrisy and bad reasoning all the time, too. But it gets to a point where you got to think a little bit more. And I consider myself a critical thinker. Rut row. Critical thinker, huh? Here we go. Gosh, how did that word get in his mouth, I wonder? And that's where I want to go with this first part of this episode, that I want to try to explain something to you, what I consider th critical thinking. And um, no, my brain does not sit in a bucket of water, by no means. And I don't have a problem with somebody's brain sitting in a bucket of water. That's, that's their business, or whatever fluid it is, you know, vaginal fluid or whatever, I don't care. It's got to be something weird. Oh, now I know where it's going. So nice, we have our first example of misogyny, but there will be a lot more of that. He, he makes fun of my logo and needs to insert female genitalia fluid into it. It seems pretty clear why he's going down this pathway. What a class act we have here. As I've said on several occasions, my brand of VAT logo promotes humility. Nothing sexual about it, but this has got to be something weird, and his reference to vaginal fluid was an insult, you see. An insult to me to make me somehow less than a man, perhaps, or possibly whipped by a woman? What's your guess? So that, that something weird is a well-known philosophy topic. It's all about not claiming to know things without good reasons. I explained it in great depth, actually, on a few occasions in my videos. And given that he is prone to going with things for less than good reason, I suppose I understand why he doesn't like my logo and wants to paint it with negative and female symbolism. So while this gentleman may try to feign humility in his forum, it seems very much a stranger to him, as is critical thinking. But he's going to attempt to co-opt it from me. Let, let's see how he does. But I do have a problem with mods that don't know how to explain what they've done. Uh, okay, so... You don't have a problem with me, then, o only with mods, right? Let, let's see if that holds up under scrutiny as well. And, and what does it even mean that he has a problem with mods who don't know how to explain what they've done? Maybe he plans on making how-to-mod videos on Patreon. I, I, but I don't really think this is about mods at all. Now, this is this certain instance right here is the fact clear. I received a so-called apology. And, folks, I don't know if it's different down under. But I do know um, what an apology is supposed to be. A true apology is not supposed to be deflections. They're not supposed to be showing me my faults. If you're apologizing to me, you're not supposed to be apologizing for my problems. I didn't ask nobody to apologize for me because I didn't think I needed to apologize for Okay, so here is just the first of several Australian slurs or insults. And it was indeed an apology. She apologized for the very thing that triggered old Griff. But we'll take a look at that later and see how he misunderstands what was said and what actually happened. And she really didn't even need to make an apology video. But after I watched the live, I did bring up that I would have rather that she'd have, she had avoided a particular question that was possibly one of the reasons she made the apology video. Plus, she also said that she went to his live and then better understood why he was asking particular questions in the chat that night. So here is Ozzy's comment shortly after my live stream, and you can see mine probably a couple hours later, if I remember correctly, after I watched the video. I watched the replay video back to try to learn what had happened in my chat room. You can see how horribly we treated him here. I had no issue with him trying to get information on Lisa. 
On the contrary, after I watched the chat, I had nothing but empathy for whatever might have happened. My mods, however, were simply trying to keep the live stream on topic, and I had informed them when I began this channel to use their judgment and to give people a few warnings, which was what happened. I will attach Aussie Insider's apology video in the description for you to decide. If you do listen to the video, you might note that she tried to explain many things in her video. Humans often try to explain how it can happen that sometimes people misunderstand each other, but Griff had no interest in trying to understand. Personally, I think he, need, he needed to make this hit video on me and Ozzy Insider to try to obfuscate from all the criticism coming his way from other people. I think maybe I must have felt like a convenient scapegoat. I apologize to my viewers because I had put out information that was viewed as being real. I was also researching it at the same time, trying to get people reaching out basically to get people to help, not getting people to run with it and try to edit it and try to make a light of it or to try to slander with it after they handled it so gracefully in the chat room. Now, mind you, it was his chat room, and I do respect that. I, I also made it clear that I did respect him and didn't mean no animosity toward him. I went to him because I knew how he, he acted and how he felt toward this shit that was going on with these different channels. This is certainly true at the beginning. His responses to me were fine and respectful, until they weren't. He had always liked my work and often even shared it on his channel. And as you just saw... I also treated him with nothing but respect. I will also show you how I treated him when he contacted me by email shortly. You can decide if I somehow disrespected him at any point in this conversation, and if I deserve to be referred to as a brain and vaginal fluid, a liar, or a hypocrite. But I think in his voice here, he seems rather uncomfortable. He acts like he is almost regretting in advance what he is about to say about me. He had, he had agreed with me several times before. I knew also that there is no other way to reach out to YouTubers other than doing a channel. I just got through it alive. People were spread out, and I had just gotten the information, and I needed to find out what it was about. Now, when I went in that chat room, it was very simple. I was trying to find out information. Not because I was being nosy, not because I was trying to interfere with his channel, not because I was trying to shut his live down, that I know he, and and Aussie says it so clearly too, that they worked their ass off to get it straightened out. That's fine. To get it ready. And everybody works on their things. I don't know that. It's just, no, it's just it's not out of no distaste whatsoever. I'm not trying to say that. That's not what I tried to do. I knew what they were doing. I didn't want to distract. This part here is is telling. We see someone trying to show how respectful they are, and that was the side of him that I appreciated. But we're going to see how he continues to flip from trying to be polite to making overt, nasty, and simply untrue claims, all to save face, and because he can't own up to what has been happening in his little corner of YouTube lately. So I had to become the brain in vaginal fluid. I just asked a few questions. Now, the problem I have is what the focus has been the whole time was that I came in here and got pissed off because nobody was answering my questions. And that she didn't time me out. Basically, what I'm getting to, what I'm trying to explain to you is exactly what, what the hell she told everybody in that 17-minute long they claimed it was supposed to be an apology. I've yet to. I, the last part of it, I think she did say the word. But everything is misleading. Even the um, the episode that um, skeptic, a scientific skeptic put out with him and uh, her side by side on a screen, both of them in an inanimate objects, but uh, go see. Oh, so we're inanimate objects now, huh? Not real people. 
because trying to make an educational video with people who simply chose to speak instead of putting ourselves on calm on, on sorry on cam makes us inanimate objects because we didn't go on video which is ironic because it's exactly like griff in the audio that you're hearing at this very moment when he was speaking these words what a great argument class act we are inanimate objects i guess that's some fashion of trying to discount anything we say um addressing the situation now i've got emails from him from the brain in the bucket that um dictates different yet similar comments that was made on his live but they don't um jive yeah no those emails aren't different and yes they jive perfectly I'll show all those emails shortly and the massive omissions he is about to make, completely misrepresenting what happened in our email exchange. And it's uh, and I've, there's two other emails. Matter of fact, it's, it's it's always increased in time frame of how much. It's almost as if they're trying to to um broadcast the fact is they researched it and they won. They found this out to be a lie. That it's basically almost like they want to show somebody where they're wrong. And let me tell you something. Yeah, these, this time difference thing. He goes into more depth on this odd little time detail um, he just discussed, but I'll come back to that later and show how pathetic this argument is. It's just not the gotcha moment that he was hoping for. And listen to this petty little man assert that we wanted to show we won. No, we answered his request for help and found out that there was no suicide, which meant that the story he ran with was false. Again, we must be terrible people for having spent all of our time, for free, trying to reason through and collect the evidence to dispel a hoax that was spreading dangerously like wildfire through the community. I didn't start that hoax. Make no mistake, I know what I did was on the edge. And it was going to be on the cuff of being wrong. I knew that. But the only way I could find out for sure what was going on. Really? So going into my chat room and distracting from my interview and scaring my chat room with the claim that someone was dead was the only way? You couldn't have just gone live, which you ended up doing anyway, and asked for the info? You couldn't have made a community post asking for information? My mods tried to do what they're told to do, to keep people on topic and to not distract the viewers from the actual topic at hand, to have my back, as you will concede later on in this conversation. Was to pursue it that way. Now, I can handle that, no problem. But to critique me from a bucket is not the way to go. Brain in a bucket. Get over yourself, Griff. Your bucket insult just doesn't hold water. Now he has changed the subject from what happened in one live stream to my next video discussing the hoax story. And I specifically did not use names to not shame or embarrass people because the point was to try to help people avoid falling for these sorts of things in the future. I didn't say a damned word about him in that chat, in that live stream. I was actually referring to several different people and several different behaviors and referred to varying degrees of irresponsible behavior. It's just not all about you, Griff but you do seem to have a persecution complex and are a tad paranoid based on what I've seen in your recent videos. I heard your prior lives where you went so far as to claim that the Lisa story was designed to bring you and your channel down. The presumption, the ego, the paranoia to believe that was all about you or that my words were you being critiqued from a bucket speaks more to your self-consumption more than what was actually being discussed in my live stream. Again, I think you just can't own that you ran with a fake story and it got exposed as a fraud and you feel foolish. So, before we go any further, let me address his claim that he was critiqued from a bucket. And now let me 
show you an email, which he ignored to mention, and later the other mails he sent, which I ignored, and that he omitted, and likely why he omitted them in his live stream. As I just showed you, he contacted me on Sunday night asking for help after the chat. I not only responded back that night respectfully, but also sent another email to him, which he never responded to on that same night, asking questions which might help me assist him. He didn't even have the courtesy to respond to my questions, so it must not have been that important to him after all. So at that point, I took it on myself to look into this Lisa person and to try to help as he had requested, despite him not responding to my questions. And then I sent him an email on Monday announcing that we had figured it out and even that I had reason to believe it exonerated him. He did not have the courtesy to respond to that email for two more days after having, again, asked for and come to me for help. It is only on Wednesday that he returned to tell me he had watched my video on the Lisa story and made the passive-aggressive remark about my assumptions of what happened in my chat. This is where he shows his bad faith. And I will play later his audio where he omits that little reference to my assumption in the chat room. Now, I will play the relevant part of my live stream where I make reference to him without using his name. The point was to give a timeline of the facts as they unfolded to us. The significance was simply when and how we heard of the rumor. This is the alleged critiquing from a bucket. It was simply a fact that we heard of the rumor because he came in the chat and brought it up. There was no assumption about what happened in the chat in the context of what I said in my Lisa story live stream. And again, how odd he never came back to me after I asked him questions on Sunday night in order to be able to help, like, well, what are the reasons you have for believing that this person is deceased? Do you have a, a name that I could look up, or do you have some other contact information? He didn't even get back to me, and he never responded to that email. He only responded on Wednesday, two days later, to a different um, email, and again, he never said anything about uh, thank you on Monday when we solved the case, and I let him know, and even that I exonerated him. So all bad faith. It seemed like when he came back on Wednesday, he was only interested in talking about this misunderstanding in the chat room. Apparently, the Lisa story was no longer relevant. The fact that we blew the lid off that story and exposed it as a fraud was no longer relevant to him. I find that very telling since he seemed so, seemed to make it so urgent to find out what happened. Odd, all of that, I think. So, and this is the delicate part. In an effort to not shame anyone, embarrass anyone, or even dox certain people, we're going to avoid the use of names entirely in our discussion this evening in favor of simply making this talk into an educational opportunity for, hopefully, for your future use. So, what happened in this case is exactly why, as scientific skeptics, we do not go out with truth claims before the evidence is sufficient. It's why we've made videos calling out people who make false accusations and constant innuendo and insinuation without the necessary evidence. And it is at least partially because people can't really seem to differentiate between opinion and fact, even when people expressly add the caveat that they're not claiming it to be fact, they say it's an opinion, but I'm not even sure it necessarily matters if some large subset of the audience simply runs with whatever, however you qualify it, whether you assert it as an opinion or a fact. I just, I'm not even sure it's really relevant anymore in this post-truth era. In a sequence, a timeline of how the events 
unfolded in front of us. One, a rumor of someone in the YouTube true crime space is alleged to be deceased and possibly at their own hands. And this rumor begins to spread. Two, this rumor then goes on to further suggest the cause was YouTube bullying. Logic dictates that if you don't know if someone is dead, you can't possibly know what the causes are yet, can you? Logic 101. Three, we get wind of this rumor in a live stream on my channel two nights ago when an individual comes into my chat asking questions about a certain person with a particular YouTube channel name. Um, I went in, thought I was handling people of a range that could function mentally. And some of them were, and a lot of them were. And I'm telling you, the way she brings it out in the memo that nobody won't talk to me. Nobody was answering my questions. I, or, and I got mad because I wasn't answering correctly. That is a deflection, folks, because... No, you are fabricating an invented story that never happened. That's all hyperbole and spin and a misrepresentation of what occurred both during and after an insignificant chat that so triggered you. I want to explain something here. She asked me right off the bat. I asked questions. I said, hey, how you doing? I asked Kim right off the bat. I was talking in that show. I was in there earlier in that damn episode. We was in there all in there watching him. And I seen Kim in there, Kim home. I apologize to her because I blocked her out on accident with my fat fingers when I done a live earlier. I told her, and she said, no problems, Griff. Said, um, but it said she still got me un unblocked, so I went back. I left. After everybody was having a good time, with watching, watching his show, and I go in there to watch the content. I left to go fix where I had Kim messed up. I fixed it. I come back in. And when it, by that, during that time I was gone is when I received the email. I received the message about this person that, that you know, we found out later. But this is then, though. Nobody knew. We found out somebody had done this, killed herself. Y'all know the story. At that point, I was trying to find out who I could find out. People I had been talking to, and there's people that can tell you that I had been trying to reach out through the phone numbers and the emails I had prior to doing what I had to do when I went in that chat. Nobody could find out anything. We were all putting our feelers out. We were trying to find it. And I appreciate y'all for the help. Yeah, pretty sure your behavior in this video proves you didn't appreciate our help at all. I'm pretty sure that it proves that you actually resented our help. What we were getting was misleading information at the time. We did not know that at the time. We were being misled by faulty subscribers, faulty creators that were stirring this pot we didn't know about. But we were getting it told to us by some parent, friends, and family members of this person. So the legalities, unless I sit there, it's kind of hard to do. You know the situation we're in. We've got names to go by. We're looking at names. We're looking at them. We've got chats right here. That's how it works, YouTube. These people want you to ignore all that shit and want to go back to like we're walking in real life. Well, it's hard to do that here. So we're doing it the best way possible, but we're still going further. So are you trying to make excuses for your behavior, Griff? Or are you just explaining the context after your apology? Sounds like a lot of what you accused Aussie Insider of doing in her apology video. Going with the information we had, we knew it was going to be trouble. We needed to find out what was going on because if that was the case, something needed to be addressed about it. It wasn't the fact of me trying to find an excuse so I can go after somebody. That's stupid. I don't have to find excuses to go after anybody. I use their own actions to go after them because they're the reason why I'm going after them. There goes, you know, going after bullies. I mean, common sense. But I went in that live, and the people that I was talking to earlier was still saying, hey, Griff, how you doing? And I got, I got a copy. I'm, I want to show that, show that too, that video, that too, part of it, partial of it, where all this stuff took place, the part that she claims that didn't happen the way she's talking about. Now, when I come back in, I said, I got you, Kim. She said, okay, thanks. That the hour and 32 minute mark is where it really gets, where everything hits. Is that's when I asked. <clears throat> I started asking the chat. I said about uh, Lisa Spy World. Asked if they knew it was. Aussie all of a sudden comes at me with my question first. 
my question first. I didn't get no other reply from that, but my question first. Now you, I got the, you can watch the damn live. It's still out there. And yes, you you can all go watch it. It appears he missed the question that Ozzy asked him. His entire argument here is flawed because he somehow missed that question. Even when he made this video and went back to check. And in polite society, when someone asks you a question first, it's normal to respond before asking another question. That's why Ozzy said that. And you know what she said? She said, did you know Gigi is spreading rumors about you? This failure on Griff's part to notice that question leads to everything he's now going to misrepresent and possibly this entire petty hit video because of a silly chat disagreement. Now, it's perfectly acceptable to miss a chat comment, but he will qualify this as a lie. And soon, I will be accused of lying as well. What a noble hill he chose to die on, and all for missing a comment. She made it out like she had asked me a question first. I never got a question. She said, my question first. Now, I don't know how they speak. In, I know how we speak English in Australia here. And I thought they speak the same language, but that's why I took it. Now, this is the second insult to Aussie Insider for her being Australian. And he's wrong. She did ask a question. I'm more than happy to give Griff the benefit of the doubt that he simply missed the question. But his subsequent behavior makes him look really bad. There was no lead into a question. If it was, okay, where's that? Because um, Beach Girl 722 says, not I, Griff, at 133 mark. As you can see here, Beach Girl's comment is in reference to his question about knowing Lisa's spy world. Then Kim says, question mark, spy world at 133. Aussie says, never heard of her. Now she's answering questions. But her question was going to be first. Okay, so she did answer your question then. How rude of her. Well, given that her question was never answered because you didn't see it, so she was wondering if you had ignored her for some strange reason. And, well, Gigi is a known lunatic conspiracy theorist who we have covered before and consider a bad actor. I even made a community post on her last night. And we've also covered Enchanted Life Path for similar reasons. You see, neither of them are welcome in my chat, as Ozzy is shortly to inform you. I'm not redacting this. It's all right. I just wrote it down off of what I've seen on the video. Beach Girl says, me neither. Griff said, I'm asking the chat. If you can, anybody knows anything about it. Uh, Platypus says, uh, knew her. I'm starting to get actual, actual answers. You know what I'm saying? Not really, Griff. Everyone was saying that they either had never heard of her or that they had no information concerning what you had come into the chat to get. It was pretty consistent across the board. While I appreciate that you were indeed apologizing, you were still disrupting my chat and distracting from my ongoing interview. And my mods had addressed your questions, and it was unlikely that anyone was going to know anything about this alleged suicide claim. In fact, you were likely the best informed person in the room. As you said, you had just gotten information. It was not infected. Now, I'd already come in and apologize, and I said, please, I don't mean to interrupt you. I just need to ask some questions. I already said that. I'd say it three more times during that live. I was trying to interject. The reason why I keep saying that over and over again is because I keep getting attacked by Aussie Girl. Attacked, huh? Nice hyperbole. Everyone answered your questions essentially with, we don't know anything. She said, I said, Beach Girl says, so news to, this, uh, these are after I asked that first question, I'm still getting continuation. 134 mark, in between other chats, you know, everything that's going on. Um, never seen her is what Beach Girl said again. Aussie says, what's the mystery? Now she's asking me a question, I think. I said, um, she changed her, changed her channel to Lisa Home Life, trying to see if I can get any kind of them thugs. Or, or somebody else might better see, hear what I'm saying to get common sense of what I'm saying, that I'm trying to ask and try to interject. Anyone, whatever information they give me, provide to me, would be great. Something simple. And I'm writing it down as I go. Kim Holmes says, uh, and I told her, I said, yeah, her name is Lisa Home Life. And she said, oh, Griff O at 135. Uh, Duck and Felony says, uh, I don't know what that is, Griff. Platypus says, oh, she, she, um, she's somebody, um, I can't remember what I wrote. I'm an idiot. 
She's an older lady, what she said. I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry to apologize. I apologize for clarity. And she said, Platypus, the Griff, um, with, with Nita. She was with Nita. So I'm getting all these little, these little uh, encrypted uh, messages back and forth. And I'm starting to pick up on information. Give me information what's going on. And I am. Like I said, I've already apologized about this shit. And I described her. I said, uh, you know, she's supposed to have done a live last time she was. And I went to going through all that detail. You can see it all yourself. But the point is that then um, I get right off the bat. I get a, after all these questions, these people hitting right within that from four. From 138 mark back to 133, five minute time, I'm getting some communication information back that's helping try to get to the direction I need to go. But then I get bombarded. I get the, um, are you in association with Gigi? Yes, the thing that I was not thrilled with and for which Ozzy in part made her apology video. But again, as she explained in her apology video, you had not answered her question about Gigi and she found that suspect. You had been seemingly ignoring her, and she was trying to protect my chat. That's the first question I get. This is five minutes into this conversation about this. I get that first question. First question? Didn't you just say, Ozzy asked you, what was the mystery? Plus, the first question which you conveniently didn't notice, and which led to this tirade? I too can play on silly little insignificant details, like your point about me saying six, nine, or twelve hours of homework that we dedicated to help you, that I'll explain later. She claims that I would not answer her question. And she was right, even if you did not see the question. Even when you went back to take notes and make this video, you missed that little detail. I had no idea what the hell she was talking about. I said, I don't know. I don't, I'm not in association with no one. Now, that right there, folks, to me, is an answer to a question, is it not? Indeed, that is an answer to a question. I'll give you that. You said you had no association. Can somebody explain that to me? I asked her that question because she kept constantly asking me that same freaking question. Probably because you hadn't responded to her first and subsequent, subsequent questions. And at the end of your video, you will actually explain your link to Gigi. And I asked, I answered her. I said, I am not in association with anyone. Now. Okay, fair enough. So you don't like being accused of being guilty by association with someone. I agree. Ozzy made her apology video because she felt you deserved one for that. But. Gosh, your entire video is built around the notion that I'm somehow dishonest or a liar because of an association with Aussie Insider, and all because you had an issue with the question, which you never saw, and chose to call me a brain in vaginal fluid. Class act. No hypocrisy there. But I'll show you what he says later in the emails, and it's far worse. I said, Lisa Spy World. Has anybody got any more information on that for me? And I quit. That's all I asked. You want that? She want that. I want enough. And then Platypus told me something. Then Austin comes back and says, warning, dude, last time. Yes, she gave you two prior warnings. What I informed my mods to do if they disrupt chat and a very common modding principle. Beach Girl was also trying to get things back on track so they could listen to the interview with Insightful. Well, we carried on. Uh, they kept asking questions and everything. I told Austin several times. That you, I, I did. I told her, shut the fuck up. I'm with no one. Again. I'm with no one again at the 139 mark. I answered again. Like I said, this didn't. This wasn't a long, drawn-out thing. It's happened between in seven-minute time. This woman heard me tell her that I'm not in association with any damn body. Twice. Twice. I told him, I said, a woman is dead. Only she wasn't dead so you traumatized the people in my chat and it was a hoax they were all clearly distraught by that little tidbit you dropped without evidence the entire point of the video i made with ozzy apparently it bothers you that we figured that out and helped you find the answer you were looking for ingrate but you want to push a stupid chat disagreement and go after me and misrepresent this entire story what a great hill 
you chose to die on. Didn't know at the time. It was all bullshit. I'm trying to find information, and I'm getting rammed up the ass by her because I'm not answering the question the way she wants me to answer. Now, she wants to talk to you and dictate to you and this little thing I'm going to show you here. Now, that's how it went down. No, Griff, that's not how it went down. You missed Ozzy's first question. You didn't like her question, but she was considering you a possible troll. She apologized to you for that. Remember this again? But this video is not about the chat room. It's about scapegoating because of all the misery that is coming down on you from other people, like your nemesis, the Benny and another channel that made several videos about you the last few days, and the dirty delete of your community post, where you chose to go down a conspiracy theory rabbit hole and threw even your friends under a bus. Funny how you bring up dirty deleting. No dirty deleting on my side. Now you can watch the damn, I've got it right here, but my damn screen's stored a little bit. You might not be able to see the actual text, but you can go back and find it, unless they have dirty deleted it, which I wouldn't doubt. Wow, a chat room disagreement with the mod that you provoked because of a fake story is more important than the grief coming down on you from everywhere else but me. Until now, that is. I want to get this out of the way, clear this up. As far as the rest of the bullshit's been going on, I don't care about none of that crap. This right here is more important to me. Because, yes, I don't like... my The fact is clear. <laughs> I'm 100% in agreement with putting out false information. I damn sure am. I will not put out false information if it can help me. And I know I, I took the bun of that shit. And you don't realize how bad that, that tore me up to know that somebody was playing games. To find out later who it was that was playing the games was also disturbing. But I'm doing research on that right now. And I will clarify that pretty soon. Because, see, the dirty deleting can't stop everything. But also the hypocrisy I've got a problem with. Because, see... You can sit there and say that you should not put out information without being, um, you know, vetted to take care of it and watch it and make sure you're putting out the proper information all day long and even on Sunday. But when you allow something like this to be put out, after I received an email from you, Mr. Skeptic, telling me after your mod addressed everyone in my comment section in one of my videos, prior to me putting out a video, of course, with her and the other woman's name and a title. So, here he accuses me of being a hypocrite, and yet still hasn't demonstrated that. And notice how he discounts what he said in this title, that disgusting misogynistic title. This is what the, that petty man went immediately to live stream. Because that's whenever it pissed me off. See, yeah, I retaliated. And I will say I was a little bit overboard, maybe, but it's all said and it's something else. I said they were carpet cleaners, okay? Take it we want to. Okay, so let's see how we should take that. Here's the Urban Dictionary definition. So he accused two women of being undercover. What does that mean? Like a spy? Like a GG conspirator? Or enchanted life paths crisis actors? Carpet cleaners. A woman who should be tied up, taken from behind and her face driven into the carpet across the floor. What a classy gentleman. Definitely worthy of being a victim's advocate and an anti-bullying activist. Tons of respect for women, I see. But be clear. When she come over into my chat, telling me that she had talked it over with her creator, and they both agreed that uh, interrupting their program this show was not in, in the best interest of them. I never asked you to interrupt a damn thing. I told you I didn't mean to interrupt anything. I made clear, clear that's exactly what I did. All I did was apologize and respect, did not really disrespect anybody, which is wanting to know if somebody could quickly tell me something. As I said, what she did was what mods are supposed to do. I was not going to reprimand her for what she did. She followed the rules of modding, even if you don't like it. And as I said... I wasn't thrilled she brought up Gigi, as I knew nothing about the story at that time, except for her being a conspiracy theorist. But there was no big conspiracy here, as you are trying to suggest. As for interrupting, you did, in fact, interrupt, whether you said you didn't want to or not. It's not about you, Griff. 
we were in the middle of an interview on a serious topic, which was about how to treat true crime cases on YouTube responsibly, something I thought you cared about. You incessantly talk about it. We even talked about not running with rumors publicly without evidence. Irony, maybe. You didn't disrespect anyone, huh? So you missed a question from my mod and then accused her of never asking a question, despite me showing it here on screen. You told my mod to shut the fuck up and then put her and another woman's name on your disgusting misogynistic video title. No, that was completely proportionate to my mods trying to protect my chat from a fraudulent story about a dead person who was not, in fact, dead. Nice false equivalence and denial of any responsibility on your part. Oh, and for the record, as you can see in the last screenshot, Joanne actually came in after this all happened, which doesn't jive with your fake story in your live that night that she was Ozzy's chihuahua chasing behind her and egging her on to go after you? As Ozzy told you on your channel in the comment section, she doesn't even know Joanne. But we all know you have some issue with Joanne. I saw her saying she does not know why, but I have no idea what the issue is between you two, so I can't comment. And I got the information in between getting timed out by your highness now she said that she's disgusted with you now i emailed i emailed you because um we had it like that to explain to you what happened and I also give you a long lengthy explain, explanation of what happened and i was just wanting to show a little bit of, uh let you if you didn't hear the whole story because i know you're trying to take care of a live and most times what your mom's supposed to be doing is trying to get you back but which they did nice to hear that you acknowledge that griff as you can see on screen, Ozzy had already responded to you, and then I responded later after re-watching the video to learn what happened. But your feelings were hurt because you missed, and, and then didn't answer a question, and didn't like another one. As Ozzy said in her apology, she was not sure if you were trolling. We get lots of trolls. Even Gigi tried to troll, which is why she is now in the blocked bucket. I even made a post about her yesterday, as she is a lunatic conspiracy theorist, pushing an idea about Russians and Koreans and YouTubers all being paid by them for their content. Gosh, look, Gigi accuses Aussie Insider of some insane conspiracy theory about YouTubers being involved in some international financial plot. She was even in your chat during your live today, as was Enchanted Life Path another mentally ill conspiracy theorist who believes everyone is a crisis actor. But I know no one likes to be unfairly accused of something simply by association. Yeah. Anyway, you told me in the, te in the email that you had not seen, you did not pay attention to the text, you had not seen the chat, and you had not talked to Aussie about the chat at that time that I emailed you. Now, I'm not saying you didn't talk to her after that, but that tells me justly right there that she told a damn lie in the damn comments. Wrong. As you can see, I referred to my email, or in my email, to my response on my video that night, meaning I didn't need to discuss anything with Ozzy. I made up my own mind based on watching the video myself. When we did talk, whenever that was, I said that I didn't necessarily agree that she made the Gigi comment, but I was also not going to reprimand her for her modding. So I am in agreement with her comment on my channel. We were in agreement on her modding, with that noted exception, which was why I liked her comment on my channel, and then subsequently added my own later after I watched the video myself. And if you're referring to the comment she posted on your channel, she clearly says we addressed your concerns after the guest interviews, as in we both made a comment on my channel, which you then commented on later, saying you had sent me an email. And look at your lovely treatment of her and Joanne, who, as shown before, made a comment after you were gone. She clearly says hello to me and the chat in my last slide, which I already showed. 
which just unfortunately doesn't fit your narrative in your video. But in addition to calling them undercover carpet cleaners, you call Ozzy a fucking piece of crap and Joanne her butt plug and tell Joanne to fuck off. It is there where Ozzy also tells you she does not know Joanne. What a class act. What a southern gentleman we have on our hands here. So you continue to talk about Ozzy and I as if we're somehow, we were plotting or somehow lying, and yet you have failed miserably to demonstrate that. None of my words had anything to do with Ozzy, but you will insinuate far worse later, as I said earlier. So again, your little gotcha moment here is also a fail. I suppose this is where you are trying to claim I'm a liar or a hypocrite. And look at all your rubbish in your first email that I simply ignored and let you get away with while remaining polite. Because at that moment, when all that was going on, she had not talked to you. But I didn't ask you about it until after she stated she did talk to you. Again, this petty little detail where you think it's a gotcha moment. So unless you're, you're in a morph situation with the brain in a bucket. Uh... Morph situation in a brain in a bat. Sorry, in a brain in a bucket? Fuck you, Griff. You know, your time frame and your time lapse does not fall in that category of being that to blame. So either one of you is telling shit or somebody else is feeding the line of shit, one or the other. Or option three, you didn't understand what I said or didn't read my comment and Aussie's on my channel. Either brains in a bucket is or the Aussie is damn talking trash. But either way, they're both not, they're not jive. How pathetic. You don't even seem to know the difference between the word address and talk. You based your entire thesis here on you missing a question and then whether or not a comment Ozzy made has something to do with what I said to you. There is no inconsistency and there is no lie, you petty little man. So I don't care about that. So you don't care so much that you chose to make me your enemy and call me a brain in vaginal fluid. And Ozzy Insider, a bitch, a fucking piece of crap, told her, to, told her to shut the fuck up in my chat room and called her a carpet cleaner in your live stream tirade title. Again, what a gentleman. Clearly, you're an anti-bully advocate. I don't give a shit about that. You take any way you want to. I, I can deal with enough of that shit enough. But to be clear, you want to go through an episode, you're going to sit there and you're going to put out a 17 minute long, oh my God, and I sit and listen to the whole damn thing. Well, if it's any consolation, I had to read your inane emails with every form of fallacy and personal grievance to your word salad sandwich and recent pseudo philosophy live streams and this incoherent rant. I had to listen to a lot more than 17 minutes. Luckily, I was able to stop listening once you began began going off down some other incoherent victimhood avenue. And I swear, I, I felt worse about everything that went on. Not only was I already pissed off about the fact of being told lies that I ended up putting out there, and I don't like doing that. That's an honest statement. You were pissed off by running with a false suicide story, which you asserted as fact in my chat room and still in your email. Plus, being held accountable for your dirty delete, throwing everyone under the bus. Plus, the other videos made about you by that creator accusing you of being a misogynist and ignoring female victims of abuse. Plus, a claim that you didn't send someone a painting that they paid for and then insulted them for expecting to get it. You had your hands full with other people, but you chose to take a punch at me and call me an Aussie insider, a hypocrite, and liar, although you called her a lot worse than that. But to feel pissed off about the way I was treated, after being polite, and really didn't want to have to do that, and I wish I wouldn't have done it now. I do now because I see right now, it doesn't matter what you do right here. It's how people perceive it. But the fact is clear. You sit right there, not only denying most of the shit, you didn't even deny it. You act like it never happened. I don't know what in the hell world you're in, ma'am. But one thing about it, to be clear, that is no apology. No, what you've done was you, you talked about, well, you mentioned my name. 
Then you mentioned something I did in the chat. But then you went, you went, you also mentioned uh, Chris McDonough. You you mentioned Gigi. Yes, she talked about several subjects to explain how people can say things that are not true and how being a mod often means dealing with trolls. All an explanation. None of that took away from her apologizing to you for asking if you had anything to do with Gigi, a known lunatic pushing an eerily similar set of claims to you. You mentioned Benny. You mentioned every Tom, Dick, and Harry that you were have problems with in that conversation. And you pretty much blamed each and every one of them people for your actions. Yes, like you when you accused everyone of being in a conspiracy in the Lisa story because you couldn't own up to it and needed to play the victim because you ran with a false story. But no, she didn't blame them for her actions. She apologized to you for bringing up Gigi and then explained other things, like people falsely accusing people of things. You gaslighted and you deflected the entire conversation. With yourself, of course, because you were talking down to us. You don't even see the irony in that comment. Now, I don't care what you got with them. I got probably problems with the same people you got problems with. It's fine. But to be clear, your problem is, is my answer to you didn't feel justified to you. You also made a comment, you don't judge people. In this little uh, so-called apology, you say you don't judge people and you do you check for facts first before you put anything out there. You also showed a hypocrisy in that statement. You also claim that the right to apply, I don't even have a clue what in the hell you're saying when you say that, but the right to apply. Don't you, you speak English, right? She, she said it twice. She said the right to reply. She asked you a question and respected your right to reply. You know, to answer, to reply. That was what she meant by judgment. As you never saw the initial question, I'm not sure you were ever in the same conversation. Not apply, Griff. Not like an application. Reply. To respond. To answer. And it's time now to say what a coward you are. She made a video with an apology and tried to explain herself in her own words. You never even went to that video and rebutted with your grievances, which would have possibly provoked an actual conversation where she could have applied, sorry, replied back. But no, you chose to do it here in your safe space, just like you chose to go after me in your safe space here, like a coward, plus your bullshit emails with a whole host of other rubbish that had nothing to do with me or the situation. I didn't even respond after the last two, because by then, I was not pleased at all with your garbage. And I wasn't sure I'd keep my composure. And after your live stream now, I'm glad that I don't have to retain myself anymore. And I'll show them in a bit and explain all that. You're sitting there saying, you're saying that what you overheard, you heard from somebody saying that, that Gigi and me was working together. You took that. And before you were going to bring it up and bring it out, you was going to ask me about it. And I want to ask to the fullest. But if you don't, if you don't want to ask me, you claim that I would not answer your question. And you didn't answer her question because you never saw it. She asked you if you knew Gigi was spreading rumors about you. And you just straight out lied. Except it's not a lie, as you didn't see the question that she asked. This whole nonsense is because you missed a question. Now, is that a fancy way of saying if somebody don't want to answer a question correctly, I can just say what I want to about them and then blame them for the damn, what the apologies are? So much of what I'm trying to say here sounds like damn word, word salad, don't it? Yeah, it, it does all sound like word salad. It also sounds like scapegoating. It also sounds like misogyny. It also sounds like you made a video going after me because you need to distract from the avalanche all around you. I don't have, I'm not even going to put her in. I'm not going to do that. I'm not, I'm not going to tell her. She knows who she is. I'll show you the video, but I'm not doing it. I'm not going to put her name out. I'm putting none of that. She knows exactly who she is. She, um, you know, she, she used to be with Benny or whatever. I don't care. She claims she's against Benny now. She's against the world. That's fine. She's against me now. I don't care. She claims she's not against me, but I can't figure it out. I'm kind of clueless on her. I really, I left there wondering more. I felt less educated. I felt like I was beneath her 
that's where she wanted me to be until I shook out of it. But the fact is clear. It's a lie. Again, that word doesn't mean what you think it does. There was no lie. Now, she's an up-and-coming channel. She used to be a damn sub. She's been a moderator. Used to be a damn uh, one that, you know, she was, a, she's been, a, I've heard rumors. She's been accused of several things, but I don't know if they're actually true or not. Um, I don't put much weight to rumors either. Another moment of irony, everyone. But um, this is amazing. It's just, this is going right. This, this is what I'm trying to, I want to show this for other than just what happened. I mean, just because I got the facts that did happen. That's why, why I'm bringing it up is because it's completely, it's, it's, obno, it's obnoxiously different than everything that happened. I mean, this is really, and also I, I could even put the, I can even put the live or, or the, um, the video that Brian and her put together on that to me was outlandish. It was almost like they were trying to train me. So as I explained before, yes, an educational video about how to research things and how to avoid hoaxes and misinformation. Is all about you, Griff. Again, how conceited can you be? It's not all about you, Griff. We discussed the entire Lisa story, how we reasoned through the inconsistencies, and how Ozzy was able to use public tools to actually identify Lisa. To smoke her out is, I believe, the expression that she's, she likes to use. How outlandish of us to try to educate. What a terrible thing. Because education is bad, okay? More anti-intellectual drivel. Now, you seem to like all that edumacation stuff from my videos until so you lost your mind and chose to go after me and call me a brain in vaginal fluid. Or us. Or all us creators, which somebody needs to train some of us. They do. I think all of us, it wouldn't hurt for any of all of us not to get any kind of them, some kind of training when it comes to doing a job. Everybody needs that some kind of a re, uh, you know, refreshers or whatever. But to sit there and claim that they research everything. And he, uh, I don't know what hours he did. He told me in the email, he six hours he looked at, he looked into the deal about her being dead or not. Then it was nine hours and another episode. And then also, and then, then, it, then when he'd done his live, it was up to 12 hours. Oh, excuse me, no, it was nine hours in, in, in live. So you do agree that people can learn something. Here is that six, nine or 12 hour thing again as if it's a gotcha moment because you simply didn't understand that I was wrong about the six hours and was informed later that it was actually we were in the audio chat for nine hours. Then I added more time as I spent more time between the first time I said it and the last. Another failed gotcha. And for the record, that was because you didn't even have the decency to come back to me until after two days when I asked you a question about the Lisa story and was trying to help. I wanted you to know how much time we spent trying to help you, as you had asked. Decent people would be grateful and appreciate the time we put into it, but you mocked us for having spent the time and claimed we needed to win, you ingrate. And the next email I got from him after I, all I did was email a simple text saying, uh, so I watched your uh, live you did pertaining to um, the Lisa thing. Liar. You said you saw the video and what I assumed happened in my chat. You omitted that little detail, which was a veiled insult to me, but not the first or last insult in your emails. That was it. So I didn't open up any doors. I just said I watched it. Just a comment. So when I got this full link damn uh, essay written to me. Or they spent 12 long, tiring hours. Are you adding the two hours together? It wasn't a long essay, Griff. You wrote me a book as well. So, fuck you, Griff. I took my time to explain to you, like a respectable person. And 12 hour long. 12 long hours. Yes. At this point, it's probably a lot longer than that. I don't really know. I didn't actually have a timer next to me, you ingrate and all to help you because you asked for it. So again, fuck you, Griff. So, I mean, I don't care if y'all live together or not. That's y'all's business. That's none of my business. That does not bother me. So what is this BS passive aggressive rubbish? I mean, it's not the first time you've applied, sorry, replied, uh, applied, employed, a passive aggressive 
tactic here. You must think I'm stupid. She lives on a different continent. But the insinuation is what? That we are what? Sleeping together? I had my girlfriend, Dr. T, on a recent video with whom I'm very much in love with. So again, fuck you, Griff. I don't have a problem with that. Be successful. Do what you got to do. But admit the fact when both of you are telling a lie. That's all I'm saying. No, neither of us told a lie, and you have not demonstrated that there was one. Pretty sure that makes you a liar. So let's use another form of English. Sawed off, Griff. I don't give a damn what you do. Or just if you're going to do it, do it. But just you know, be careful who you're fucking with. Because I don't just, I'm not going to back down from it. If it's straight ass right there in front of you. If you're not dirty deleting and you're leaving it out there and you're telling yourself, because right there you're exposing yourself. And if that's what you want to do, then so be it. So where was the dirty delete, Griff? There was no dirty deleting that I'm aware of. You certainly haven't demonstrated it. You are a dirty deleter, though. Sounds like projection to me. As you deleted your community post where you threw your friends under the bus and your nemesis, Benny, happened to get a screenshot and expose you. By the way, that's the reason that Hanlon left YouTube. You made her cry, just like Amanda, in your misogyny-laden and profane rant with her on the phone. They were both pretty devastated, and they tried to defend you until they just couldn't anymore. But you chose, but you chose to call me a liar and a brain in vaginal fluid. Hey, I got all the faith in the world for you. That's what you're going to do. I wish everybody could be. I wish there was no way you could delete it. But whenever you're sitting there being strong on what you're saying on your merit, you're trying to sit everything and what you're saying is true, and you're not expecting, you don't want nobody to question you, then uh, what reality are you living in? You need a mirror, Griff. What reality are you living in? Because that's pertaining to me. And if it didn't happen, I'm not agreeing with it. And I'm not just shutting up because that's my place. Now, if you feel entitled, you feel like you're better than somebody, and you go for it. Do what you got to do. You told Ozzy to shut the fuck up. Maybe you should shut the fuck up if you're going to spew nonsense all the time, like in this video and your prior ones. I don't feel that way. I'm not better than nobody. But I will not be held down by somebody's thumb. Really? No, you just curse people out. Throw your friends under the bus instead of owning up. And tell people to shut the fuck up and call them carpet cleaners. Ooh, big tough guy. Now, this is to address that matter and everything else I plan on playing on today. But I want to show you all this. I want you to listen to this. What she's telling you. How she tells it. First of all, I want you to try to find out where the apology is, if you can. If you don't mind just doing that for me, I need some help with that. I would love for somebody. And it might be chopped up because I did. I did fa It was 17 minutes long, folks. I did fast forward it and put it together. And this little thing, it's not, it's not been edited. It's just put together to where I get close to the point where my point was at. Because out of 17 minutes, that's all I got out of it was that this was the part that I figured really pertained to me. You know what I mean? You might not see it the same way, but I tried my best to look at it painfully, listen to this shit, 17, hour, 17 minutes of shit. Your video is a lot longer than 17 minutes with, in my humble opinion, far more excrement. To break it down to where it'd be like four minutes long, okay? But I'm trying to get it to where it says it. And it's just, none of she's saying I can, I can go against everything she says because it's not factual. But it's, it's clarifying why she's able to apologize for me is what I'm getting out of it. So let's just try to bear with me. I'm trying to, I'm aggravated with shit too. Test now. I like the music. It's trying to really ground for Kate. Hey, dude, come back down. Turn it. I don't have any problems with you. None of us. Okay, wait a minute. I want y'all to hear that part what there. She told me right out the fucking bat. The first thing I ever fucking mouth, part of my French. This is, man, this is an apology, folks, all right? Remember that. Griff, or hey, Griff, calm the fuck down, all right? Let that soak in for a minute. I mean, I just, that right there was the first thing that come out of her mouth during that live. You can check if you want to. I'm not lying. Hey, Griff. Calm the fuck down, all right? What the fuck does that mean? Calm the fuck down so I can not apologize to you. Really? Calm the fuck down. 
I'm not the one upset. I'm not doing anything, but I got to calm the fuck down now because I'm upset. I don't, I don't understand that shit. You're angry about that. Maybe that was a response to you telling her to shut the fuck up, calling her a carpet cleaner, a fucking piece of crap, and a bitch. You seem to demand respect, but I'm not seeing you really hand it out very much. This thing's fucking what are you talking up. About? We don't know the situation you're talking about. We don't know the live stream you're trying to find out about. We answered your questions. Even politely, I might add. But when I asked you a question, you got angry. I don't know. We don't know the live stream we're talking about. We don't know the channel you're talking about. We answered you politely. But when I asked you politely, you wouldn't answer me. They don't know the channel I'm talking about. They don't know nothing about what the hell I'm talking about. They're answering me left and right. I answered her twice, but I'm not answering her. I have a lot of me on what the hell she's talking about. Nice contradiction and a lie. She did answer you. She was irked because you never answered her first question because you missed it. Even when going back over this to make this video. Oops. For your name out there, I just was giving you a right of reply. And since you didn't answer me politely. and <laughs> I didn't answer politely. You kept going on about the question we'd already answered for you. That's why I timed you out. I didn't hide you from the channel. I didn't do anything <laughs> nasty. I just timed you out. We had a guest on the panel who was talking about being humane and sensitive towards true crime cases. The topic was very carefully planned out to address specific issues. I'm sorry that your issue didn't get a look-see. That wasn't my choice. A look-see? Does that make you feel better when you say a look-see? And here's another Australian insult, which is neither here nor there. I'm guessing you've never been to Australia. Um, pro tip, they speak differently than in the U.S. Same thing in Canada, the U.K., and all across the world, where millions speak their native tongue and English as well, sometimes even better than Americans. Don't you realize how petty you sound with another passive-aggressive slur? Yep, you really got her. She's not American. I know what they were watching. They needed to watch. They are trying to tell you how to treat people during crew crime cases. That's true. She does not need to learn that. That's true. But it, just sorry, it's your case. His, I'm sorry. I didn't mean his topics with his guests, it was not my business to interrupt him. In the end, I had to find out what the heck the problem was. So I went and watched your live stream, and it was there that I found out that you... Yeah, top notch. Listen to you talk over your own recording so no one can even hear. Internet sucks, folks. You're concerned about somebody. We do have trolls that come in and do this stuff all the time. New Year's Eve, for example, we had the same person came. Did I have anything to do New Year's Eve? No. Now she's going back to talking about trolls. She is excusing every damn thing she's doing, and that's what she's calling an apology. That's calling an apology. I'm so proud of her. I think she did a hell of a job. Again, there's six or seven different trolls. So the fact that we couldn't determine whether you were trolling us or not is quite simply a result of having been trolled the last live that we did. I get what your concern is about now, but I've watched your live stream and understood what it is you were trying to to say and i apologize if my question about your association with gg upset you so much that wasn't the intention, the intention <laughs> my association with gg she she's, she's not she's not it she's not taking my damn answer yeah. i gave her her fucking answer i gave her her fucking answer and she comes back and still states that because of her question and the way i felt about my association with gg that was okay for her to ask that question and for her to believe that. But my answer does not justify it. I wish I could, I wish this thing wants to jumble up where I can see it. Because that's like I said, the internet sucks here. I want y'all to better hear that. It's pissing me off. She asked the question if you were associated with Gigi. Therefore, she is apologizing for the question about your association with Gigi. Do you, again, not speak English? She is not asserting that you have one. She's referring to the question where she asked if there was one. You said no. You got upset. That is what she is apologizing for. How obtuse 
can you be? She said she was not sure if you were trolling and explained that we had a lot of trolls in our previous video. Then after she went and watched your video, she understood you were not trolling and empathized and empathized with your concerns. That's why she apologized. Damn, man. Australian is not French. It's the same damned English as Georgian. But the woman has got issues. Straight out the box got issues. There's something materially wrong with her. But it is what it is. No, you have issues, Griff. All sorts of issues. Which is why you have an avalanche of criticism falling down on you this week. Which is why you tried to distract and make this video and go after me. Ironic you're always talking about deflection. This video is deflection. You have issues. And you need tissues for all your issues. Anyway, I'm going to stop all this shit right here today. Because I done said enough about it. I'm going to go back to what I was going to talk about. And it does, it does go coincide with this. Aussie Insider, I think it is. If y'all need to know. It's on there. Y'all go check it out. It's Aussie Insider. Uh, but he did the, the skeptics interview. It was interview with Insightful on how to treat true crime cases was the one that it actually, the, the chat went on, on the skeptic of mine, or brain, whatever the hell, I think it's scientific skeptics. Um, it was during a time he was having issues with his echo anyway, so it wasn't like, a, like a, it wasn't a time when actually there was actually discussion going on. She was not, she had an issue. She was, uh, the, the chick had like she was damn, something was going on with, I don't know what she's doing online or something, but it was kind of screwed up. You can, you watch the damn video, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm not playing games. There was some weird stuff going on behind him screen. And um, even somebody else mentioned something in the chat, said something about sound, sound she was having sex. I don't know. I wasn't there. I was in the chat. I love this little passive-aggressive quip here. He even managed to take a shot at Insightful, who has nothing to do with this. Yes, yeah, something about Echo. Insightful's audio was bad that night when she wasn't speaking because she does not go on live stream very often and her mic was too loud and we were picking up a lot of background noise. And the echo was because I have to change my mixer temporarily to play external audio, which created a temporary echo, which I promptly fixed. Doing a line, like doing a line of cocaine there, Griff? Something weird going on? She was having sex. What kind of petty little man says that? I mean, the gall. But, it just don't jive. If you're going to come out and go through the effort of putting an apology out, at least have some kind of uh, correspondence with actually what happened. Then you can change, then change the narrative. But don't just go out there completely change the narrative where it acts like it's a different chat altogether. I didn't see the point. And as far as me and Gigi, that ain't got nothing to do with this. And it ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't understand where she's coming from that. Why does she think? All I did was bring up a fact that is clear. And you don't keep trying to do it. Did you catch that? I'm only going to say this one time about that shit because I'm still, I'm, I'm already researching. I don't need to research no more. You're a fool if you think that there is nothing behind the KZ read. You are a fool if you think that. Because the, no matter how you try to address this shit and how try you try to go by behind it, I'm finding out that there is more to it and there is ways of being involved with this thing because it'll change names here pretty soon. Now, I'm not going to bring it up yet. I've been advised not to. There's going to be more involved. But that KZ Reed, there's more to it. Now, whether y'all want to try to, y'all think it's just something to talk about, and you, I think what it is, you got people out there that don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Are you a cyber hacking expert now, Griff? I'd put money on it that you don't know what you're talking about concerning that potential cyber scam. From what I understand, Aussie has been looking into exactly what that site is, what the possible scam is, and how it works, as this is more her area of expertise, as she discussed in our live, about how she was able to locate Lisa. Maybe she will let us know more about exactly what it is. I have only superficially looked into what it is. Seems like it's definitely some sort of scam, but I'm not a cybercrime expert, nor do I claim to be. What I won't be doing, though, is making videos about it or sharing the link without knowing exactly what the potential scam is, if it is a scam. It seems people like Gigi, and you do that, though. 
but they would rather just say shit like that to blast somebody if they can find whatever excuse they can to get something over on somebody. Because that's all it's about is hating bullies. If you people would actually get off your ass and do something, instead of sitting behind that screen, acting like you're somebody and you're not, then you might be a little more useful. Make your content a little bit better. But there is facts out there. Now, no, I am not choreographing with Gigi. She's got her own little thing going on. But what I do is mine. And like I said, I'm going to wait. And no, I don't put out false rumors on accident, on, on purpose. That was on accident. I apologize for that. I'm not going further. But if you're not going to address the fact that your rudeness, your entitlement, and you also your little crony girlfriend that was right there with you, you claim you didn't even know her. Buddy, I think you have an anger management problem as well. But she's right with you everywhere she goes. Your shadow, run her damn mouth. That's your problems right there. There's problem makers in this little community we got here. And, low, you know, by all means, I wish I was never involved in it. I didn't get involved in this community on accident. Another example of where you look, well, just like an asshole, basically. You and Joanne seem to have some long-standing dispute. Ozzy said on your channel she doesn't even know her. Do you have any evidence that Ozzy knows her? Or are you just whistling Dixie? Because you don't like Joanne, and now you don't like Ozzy. Therefore, they know each other, are in cahoots, and are girlfriends. Really? In your prior video, you called Joanne Ozzy's little chihuahua, egging her on to go after you. Which is funny, because based on the timestamps in the chat, she came in after you were long gone. Got an explanation for that? How could she have been egging Ozzy on to get you if she was not yet in the chat? Oops. Unless somehow I missed her in the chat, but I have a screenshot after you were gone that says, Hey, brain and friends. Seemed like she came in later. Maybe I'm wrong. So these are the YouTube troublemakers, huh? One small channel that is not monetized, who tries to educate it? who tries to educate, who found Lisa's identity and helped expose a hoax suicide, which was causing a scandal, and Joanne, who doesn't even have a channel. They're a problem because why? You don't like them? Yeah, these are clearly the troublemakers of YouTube. But hey, I'm a troublemaker too, I suppose, despite you sharing my content and saying how much you respect me and till I became a brain in vaginal fluid because you didn't agree with the way one of my mods treated you when you came in with a hoax suicide story and scared everyone by saying someone was dead. Who wasn't? What a noble hill to die on. Or was it because she used to be friends with Benny and he is your biggest enemy and someone who you constantly obsess about and who just exposed your dirty delete community post where you threw everyone and your friends under the bus and made Amanda cry after you verbally accosted her and even made Hanlon leave YouTube because she could no longer defend you anymore after that community post and what you did to Amanda? I'm sure I'm the problem, Griff. Make me into your new Benny. This was something. I got drawn in this community. <laughs> I would have never even got here if somebody wouldn't share my video. That's what got me in this. So that's how I involved this them. It didn't like I just moved in, you know. But to be clear, now I know that's how that shit works. The bottom line is it's all about the drama.
You're right, Griff. It's all about the drama. And you're the drama king. Bullying and insulting women and following conspiracy theories down little rabbit holes convinced everyone is out to get you and bring down your channel and you accuse everyone else of your problems because you can't own up like the tough man you pretend to be. So for calling me a liar, a hypocrite, and a brain in vaginal fluid, for no reason, insulting my comment without actually ever addressing anything said in any of my videos, fuck you, Griff. And for the false accusations against Aussie Insider, who was generous enough to be my mod, fuck you, Griff. And for not having the balls to go to Ozzy's apology video and make your rebuttal, which would have allowed her to respond and clarify your concerns? Fuck you, Griff. And as for helping you find Lisa and get the information as you requested and asked for, again, I guess no good deed goes unpunished.